STEM Trailblazer Bios. Astrophysicist and Space Advocate Neil deGrasse Tyson by Marnie Ventura. Learner Publishing Group. Chapter 1 Discovering the Night Sky. The Hayden Planetarium introduced Neil to the wonders of the universe. The lights in the planetarium dimmed. Nine year old Neil sat in the darkness and stared up at the huge domed ceiling. The audience grew silent. A voice boomed. We are now in the universe, and here are the stars. It was Neil's first visit to the Hayden Planetarium in New York City. He had seen the night sky many times from his home in the Bronx. He had seen a few stars and the moon. But tonight was different. On the ceiling above him, he saw countless stars, planets, and constellations, groups of stars that form shapes. Neil was amazed by what he saw on the planetarium's ceiling. Hayden Planetarium The Hayden Planetarium is a part of the Rose Center for Earth and Space at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. Inside is a large space theater with seating for 429 people. Visitors can view images of stars, planets, and galaxies projected on the large domed ceiling. Not long after this, Neil and his family took a trip to Pennsylvania. Away from the lights of New York City, he was able to see the stars more clearly. He realized the stars he had seen on the planetarium ceiling were not just part of a show. They were real. He wanted to know more about them. Neil felt like the universe was calling him. Growing up in the Bronx Neil deGrasse Tyson was born on October 5, 1958, in New York. He grew up in the Bronx, in New York City. Neil lived with his parents, his older brother, and his younger sister in a tall building called the Skyview Apartments. The Bronx's bright city lights made it difficult for Neil to see the stars in the night sky without a telescope. Neil has spent his life learning and teaching about the universe. Neil went to public school. He was an average student. He never had a teacher tell him that he was the best in the class or that he was going to go far. In fact, his third grade teacher wrote a note on his report card. She said, Neil should be more serious about his schoolwork. Getting a better look. After the family trip to Pennsylvania, a friend lent Neil a pair of binoculars. Neil went to the roof of his building and looked at the night sky through the binoculars. He was amazed to see craters, large bowl-shaped holes, on the moon. He wanted to see more. When he was 11, his parents bought him a telescope. Soon, Neil wanted a bigger telescope to learn more about astronomy. But a more powerful telescope cost $200. Neil's parents didn't have a lot of extra money. So, Neil started a business walking dogs for people who lived in his building. He walked several dogs three times a day. Most days, he earned $5. He saved his money until he had enough to pay for half of the telescope he wanted. His parents paid for the other half. Neil didn't stop walking dogs. He earned more money to buy a camera. He wanted to take photos of the stars and the planets he saw. At the age of 11, Neil decided he would become an astrophysicist. Tech Talk What's fun about telescopes is that if you've never looked through one, and then you look through one for the first time, at the moon or at Saturn, it is astonishing. Saturn has rings. Oh my gosh, the moon has craters. Things you've heard about and read about, but to experience them yourself becomes a singular moment in your life. You are there in the universe, and you can't get enough of it. Neil deGrasse Tyson From a young age, Tyson was determined to be an astrophysicist. Chapter 2 Learning About the Universe Neil learned more about astronomy and physics at the Bronx High School of Science. Neil learned more about the stars. In sixth grade, he took astronomy courses at the planetarium. He often took his telescope to the roof of his apartment to study the night sky. Sometimes, police officers would come up to make sure everything was okay. They weren't used to seeing people using telescopes in the Bronx. They were curious. Neil helped them look through the lens. 
he pointed out Saturn's rings and talked about how pretty he thought they were. When he was ready for high school, Neil chose the Bronx High School of Science. When he was 15, Neil went to space camp. He spent a month studying the stars and the planets. He worked with scientists and other young people. When he got back to New York, he gave a talk to 50 adults. He told them what he had learned. Neil's career as an astrophysicist had begun. College years. Neil graduated from the Bronx High School of Science in 1976. He applied to Harvard University in Massachusetts and Cornell University in New York. He got a letter from Carl Sagan, a famous scientist who taught at Cornell. Sagan had his own television show. He had written many books about the cosmos, or the universe. Sagan told Neil he hoped the young man would choose Cornell. Although Neil chose Harvard, he never forgot Sagan's kindness. Neil couldn't believe it when he received a personal letter from the famous scientist Carl Sagan. Neil studied physics at Harvard. He graduated in 1980. Then he worked toward advanced degrees at the University of Texas in Austin and Columbia University in New York City. While he studied astronomy, he earned money by teaching and writing about astrophysics for Stardate magazine. In 1989, his first book about the universe was published. It was titled Merlin's Tour of the Universe. He got his doctorate, the highest level of college degree, in astrophysics in 1991. Neil received his doctorate in astrophysics from Columbia University. Tyson autographs one of his books, titled Origins, Merlin's Tour of the Universe. Tyson's first book, Merlin's Tour of the Universe, was published in 1989. In it, a made-up character named Merlin comes from the Andromeda Galaxy. He tells of his conversations with famous scientists of the past, such as Albert Einstein, and answers popular questions about astronomy. Becoming a Role Model Neil deGrasse Tyson had grown up in a time when African Americans were not always treated fairly. Tyson wanted to help make the world a better place for African Americans. During high school and college, he was on a wrestling team. In college, one of the wrestlers on Tyson's team told him he should not become an astrophysicist. He thought Tyson should work to improve life for African Americans. This bothered Tyson, but he didn't stop studying astrophysics. A few years later, there was a solar flare, or small explosion, on the sun. A television station asked Tyson to be on the news. He explained the solar flare to the public. Tyson watched himself on TV. He saw that he was helping make the world a better place for people. He was an expert on astrophysics. He was teaching the public about space. He was a role model for young scientists. Tech Talk I had never before seen a black person interviewed on television for expertise that had nothing whatever to do with being black. You think about it, you've seen blacks. Sure, they're entertainers and actors and athletes, but when you look at people brought onto television as experts, watching myself, that was the first time I had ever seen it. Neil deGrasse Tyson Tyson explained a solar flare to the public during his first appearance on television in 1989. Chapter 3. Working for the Universe. Tyson's hard work earned him the job of director and head scientist at the Hayden Planetarium. Tyson worked as a researcher after college. He studied how stars form. He learned more about how stars explode. He studied dwarf galaxies. He found new facts about the Milky Way. In 1995, he became the director of the Hayden Planetarium. Tyson was now the head of the place where he first fell in love with the night sky, Pluto. In 1997, the Hayden Planetarium was nearly 60 years old. It needed to be rebuilt. Tyson was in charge of the new displays. He removed Pluto from a solar system model. Tyson argued that Pluto didn't belong with the other planets. It was smaller and made mostly of ice. Some astronomers and museum guests did not agree with Tyson's decision. They thought Pluto should stay. Pluto had been known as the ninth planet from the Sun since 1930. Tech Talk 
What I like most about the universe is the birth, lives, and deaths of stars. They're born from huge gas clouds. Some die spectacular deaths, spreading their rich guts across the galaxy, creating the heavy elements that comprise planets, life, and even people. I bring this cosmos to the public. Neil deGrasse Tyson Space Advocate In 2001 and 2004, President George W. Bush asked Tyson for help. He wanted Tyson to work with other experts to study space exploration. Together they helped plan the U.S. space program. Tyson became a space advocate. He wanted people to find out more about our universe. He thought everyone needed to understand science. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union agreed with Tyson about Pluto. They named Pluto a dwarf planet. That same year, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, asked Tyson to join them. NASA had been formed the same year Tyson was born. When he was a boy, there were no African-American astronauts, scientists, or engineers at NASA. He was glad to be a part of the space program. From left, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Bill Nye, Jim Bell, Scott Hubbard, and Lewis Friedman, members of the Planetary Society Board, pose at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida in 2010. Chapter 4. Sharing His Love for the Universe Tyson shows off one of his Cosmos vests during a visit to the Sirius XM Studios. Tyson shows his love for the cosmos in many ways. He has a Saturn desk lamp in his office. He collects ties with cosmos on them. Tyson claims one of his ties is spaghetti sauce proof. If he spills food on it, it just looks like another nebula. Tyson likes to wear his cosmic ties because it is like wearing the universe, he says. Since his first public talk at the age of 15, Tyson has found many ways to tell people about science. Books and Papers Tyson has written 11 books. He wants people who are not scientists to understand space and the universe. He wants them to enjoy it as he does. Tyson's autobiography is called The Sky is Not the Limit. In it, he writes about growing up in the Bronx. He tells how he decided to become an astrophysicist. Tyson also writes for science magazines, and he writes papers about his research. Tyson and comedian Eugene Merman write, Answer Science Questions for a Crowd in New York City in July 2011. In 2009, Tyson appeared on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Television. In 2004, Tyson was the host of a TV series called Origins. It told how life began. He was also the host of Nova Science Now beginning in 2006. In this program, he made science news fun and easy to understand. Tyson has been a guest on many other TV shows. Radio. In the summer of 2009, Tyson created a radio talk show called Star Talk. He invites famous comedians to talk with him about science. By adding humor to science, he makes it fun for all people to learn more about astronomy and physics. Twitter. Tyson is active on Twitter, the social network where people tweet by posting short messages. So many people enjoy reading Tyson's tweets about the world of science that he won an award from Time magazine for having one of the top 140 Twitter feeds in the world in 2011 and 2012. The Pluto Files After the International Astronomical Union stated that Pluto was no longer considered a planet, many people did not agree. They still wanted Pluto to be called a planet. On the TV show The Pluto Files, which aired in December 2011, Tyson traveled across the United States to find out why people were so passionate about Pluto. And Beyond in May 2013, the Fox Network announced that Tyson is working on a television series called Cosmos, a space-time odyssey. It will be a new way for Tyson to help people learn more about astrophysics. Tech Talk I'd like to believe that the scientific literacy of the public can be enhanced by using the universe as a hook to get people interested in science. You just show them how beautiful the universe is. And they'll say, 
I want to learn more. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Timeline. 1958. Neil deGrasse Tyson is born on October 5th in New York City. 1976. Tyson graduates from the Bronx High School of Science in June. 1980. Tyson graduates from Harvard University and earns a degree in physics. 1991. Tyson earns a doctorate degree from Columbia University in astrophysics. 1995. Tyson becomes the director of the Hayden Planetarium. 2001. President George W. Bush asks Tyson to study the future of exploring space for the United States. 2006. Tyson begins hosting the first of five seasons of Nova Science Now. 2009. Tyson creates and hosts the Star Talk radio show. 2011. Time magazine honors Tyson's Twitter feed as one of the top 140 in the world for the first time. 2013. In May, Tyson begins working on a television series called Cosmos, a space-time odyssey.